Unit 1, Lesson 4. The Loyalists were colonists who stayed loyal to Britain and King George III during the American Revolution. They were against American independence. There were about 500,000 Loyalists when the American Revolution started in 1775. That was about 16% of the total population. Loyalists, also known as Tories, lived in all the colonies. They were strongest in the South, especially Georgia and South Carolina. Many also lived in the mid-Atlantic colonies. New York had at least three times as many Loyalists as any other colony. Who were the Loyalists? Many important and powerful people were Loyalists. Thomas Hutchinson was a famous historian and governor of Massachusetts. John Copley of Massachusetts was a famous painter. Peter Harrison of Rhode Island was the greatest architect of the time. Some Loyalists, like Joseph Galloway of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania did not like Britain's harsh treatment of the colonies, but they remained loyal to Britain. They did not want to break away from their country. Even Benjamin Franklin's son William was a Loyalist. He was the colonial governor of New Jersey. His father urged him to join the Patriot cause, but he refused. The Patriots put William in jail in 1776. He was released in 1778 and went to New York City, which was occupied by British forces. There he became head of the Board of Associated Loyalists. The board helped direct Loyalist mi military activities. William Franklin left New York for Britain in 1782 and never returned. Most colonists who worked for Britain as crown officials were Loyalists, but Loyalists came from other groups as well. Rich people and poor people joined the Loyalist ranks. They were bakers and bankers, farmers and sailors. Every religious group had its share of Loyalists too. Their ancestries were English, Irish, Welsh, Scottish, German, and Dutch. Some black slaves joined the Loyalist cause. They had been offered freedom by the Loyalist leaders. But there were far more American Indians who sided with Britain. Joseph Brandt, the leader of the Mohawks, remained loyal to Britain. So did some of the other leaders of the Iroquois Confederacy. Brandt was even made a captain in the British Army. In 1777 and 1778, he led Indian forces against American settlements in New York and Pennsylvania. The Patriots fought hard for their cause during the Revolution. The Loyalists did too. Some were spies, some served in the regular British Army, others fought in militias. About 19,000 men fought in more than 40 Loyalist unions. The largest of these was Cortland Skinner's New Jersey Volunteers. Many Loyalists flee. The Patriots believed the Loyalists were a serious threat to the Revolution. In January 1776, before the Declaration of Independence, the Second Continental Congress resolved that some Loyalists ought to be disarmed and the more dangerous of them kept in safe custody. After independence on July 4, 1776, some states passed laws to control the Loyalists. Their home and property were taken away. They were beaten, tarred, and feathered, and sometimes killed. This caused thousands of Loyalists to flee. During much of the American Revolution, the British Army occupied New York City. Loyalists fleeing other states gathered there. By the end of the American Revolution, in 1783, about 100,000 Loyalists had fled to other countries. Some went to Britain, others to British colonies in Florida and the Caribbean. At least half of the Loyalists went to Canada. They moved into the province of Nova Scotia, and they settled on lands that would become the provinces of New Brunswick and Ontario. Most Loyalists, however, stayed in the United States. And after the peace treaty was signed in 1783, some Loyalists who had fled returned to the United States. Mohawk chief Joseph Brandt was not one of them. He fled to Canada with thousands of Mohawks and other Native Americans. The British government gave him a large area of land in what is now Ontario. Loyalists did not support American independence, but they were an important part of American history. The British called the American Revolution a rebellion. The Patriots called it a war for independence. The Loyalists made the war into a civil war.
Here is your independent work today. You'll find this in pages 19 and 20 of your Purple Unit 1 workbook. Let's take a look. Uh, we'll be doing text-dependent questions today on the text Loyalists. Number one, use or directions. Answer the following questions using specific evidence from the text to support your thinking. Number one, using evidence from the text, write a definition for loyalist in your own words. And then in the box, you'll provide text evidence. Number two, according to the text, the loyalist presence in the American colonies was strongest in A, New England, B, the Mid-Atlantic colonies, C, the South, D, New York. You would circle the answer that you think is correct, and then you would provide text evidence in the box below. Number three, the text says, loyalists fleeing other states gathered there, New York City. Why does the text say that many loyalists went to live in New York City? A, the British Army occupied New York City during much of the Revolutionary War. B, loyalists were more likely to be merchants and therefore wanted to live near New York, New York City Harbor. C, the mayor of New York City put out a decree welcoming loyalists to stay in the city. D, the King of Britain came to visit New York City. You'll choose the letter of the choice that you think is best, and then you'll provide text evidence why you chose that one. Number four, speaking about Mohawk, Chief Joseph Brandt, the text says, the British government gave him a large area of land in what is now Ontario, Canada. Use evidence from the text to make an inference. Why do you think the British gave this loyalist land after the war ended? Number five. This text uses different words to describe the American Revolution. The British called the American Revolution a rebellion. The Patriots called it a war for independence. The Loyalists made the war into a civil war. Discuss why they might have used different terms to describe the same event. And in the box you will respond using text evidence. Directions. Answer the following question using specific evidence from the text to support your thinking. Number one. Using evidence from the text, write a definition for loyalist in your own words. There is information about the loyalists in the introduction of this text. So you see I have the whole text over here to the left and then I pulled out the first two paragraphs of the introduction. I will read those now. The Loyalists were colonists who stayed loyal to Britain and King George III during the American Revolution. They were against American independence. There were about 500,000 Loyalists when the American Revolution started in 1775. That was about 16% of the total population. Loyalists, also known as Tories, lived in all the colonies. They were the strongest in the South especially Georgia and South Carolina. Many also lived in the mid-Atlantic colonies. New York had at least three times as many loyalists as any other colony. To answer number one, you need to write a definition for a loyalist in your own words. When we looked back at the text, we see some information right there that tells us what a loyalist was. It says in the text, loyalists were colonists who stayed loyal to Britain and King George III. It also says they were against American independence. You can take that information and put the definition in your own words, and you can start off your sentence, as I've done up here for you, with the words, a loyalist was someone who, and then you can respond using text evidence, but doing your best to put it in your own words. Pause the video now to finish responding to this question if necessary. Directions. Answer the following question using specific evidence from the text to support your thinking. Number two. According to the text, the loyalist presence in the American colonies was strongest in A. New England, B. The Mid-Atlantic colonies, C. The South, D. The New York. The word presence in the question means the number of people present in that space. So let's go back to the question. According to the text, the loyalist presence, meaning the number of people in the colonies, was strongest in A, New England, 
B, Mid-Atlantic Colonies, C, the South, D, New York. And then you'll see there's a box right below it where it says text evidence. That's where you're going to pull a piece of information right out of the text to show how you can support your answer choice for number two. For question number two, we're looking at the same section of the Loyalist text. Um, it's still in the introduction. You'll see it over here to the left, and then you'll see the first two paragraphs are made a little bit bigger. I'm going to read those again for you. It says, the Loyalists were colonists who stayed loyal to Britain and King George III during the American Revolution. They were against American independence. There were about 500,000 Loyalists when the American Revolution started in 1775. That was about 16% of the total population. Loyalists, also known as Tories, lived in all the colonies. They were strongest in the South, especially Georgia and South Carolina. Many also lived in the mid-Atlantic colonies. New York had at least three times as many Loyalists as any other colony. Question number two is a multiple choice question. You need to choose the answer that you think is best, but we also know that we need to go back to the text to look for evidence to support that answer. So we've already read the question, we've read the text again, um, now we need to think it through. It says that they're asking where the Loyalist presence was strongest, okay? And presence means the number of people present. So we go back to the text again, it says that they were strongest in the South, especially Georgia and South Carolina. Many also lived in the mid-Atlantic colonies. New York had at least three times as many Loyalists as any other colony. So I see the word strongest in the text and strongest was in the question. But I don't want us to get too confused there because I think they might mean different things. In the question, it's asking where was the presence the strongest, where the number of people were the strongest or the most. In the text, I see it says they were strongest in the South, meaning they were the toughest of all the Loyalists. They were the toughest in the South. But if we keep reading on, it says New York had three times as many. So that tells us that there were more Loyalists in New York than in the other regions. So when you're making your choice, A, B, C, or D, I want you to take that into consideration, that information. And then you need to provide text evidence in the box, that yellow space um, up here. You need to provide text evidence for how you came up with your answer to number two. And you can use the information that I've underlined here to help you provide that text evidence. Pause the video now to finish responding to this question if necessary. Directions. Answer the following question using specific evidence from the text to support your thinking. Number three. The text says, Loyalists fleeing other states gathered there, New York City. Why does the text say that many Loyalists went to live in New York City? A. The British Army occupied New York City during much of the Revolutionary War. B. Loyalists were more likely to be merchants and therefore wanted to live near the New York City Harbor. C. The mayor of New York City put out a decree welcoming Loyalists to stay in the city. D. The King of Britain came to visit New York City. Okay, to find the answer to number three, I've gone back to the text, to the section labeled, Many Loyalists Flee. You'll see that over to the left, and then I've made that part of the text a little bit bigger so that we can read it more easily and you'll see that it's the first paragraph of the section titled Many Loyalists Flee. The Patriots believed the Loyalists were a serious threat to the revolution. In January 1776, before the Declaration of Independence, the Second Continental Congress resolved that some Loyalists ought to be disarmed and the more dangerous of them kept in safe custody. After independence on July 4th, 1776, some states passed laws to control the Loyalists. Their homes and property were taken away. They were beaten, tarred and feathered, and sometimes killed. This caused thousands of Loyalists to flee. During much of the American Revolution, the British Army occupied New York City. Loyalists fleeing other states gathered there. Okay, now that we have read the question, we've read the text again, it's time to go back and look at the question. 
This is a multiple choice question, so you have to make the choice that you think is best. And it's asking you, why do you think many loyalists went to live in New York City? And so, again, the evidence is going to be in the text, so if we see an option up here that doesn't have anything to do with what we read in the text, we can probably eliminate it. Um, it didn't say anything about the King of Britain coming to visit New York City, letter D. You can eliminate letter D. Um, it does not say anything about the mayor of New York City putting on a decree welcoming loyalists uh, to stay in the city. And so we can eliminate C, which means we're left with A or B. The British Army occupied New York City during much of the Revolutionary War. And we see that occupy means that they were in control of or they were more likely to be merchants and therefore wanted to live New, New York Harbor. Um, and so, again, I don't know that we saw that information in the text, um, but we are down to at least two choices. So process of elimination is a great way to try to figure out the answer to a multiple choice question. Once you've made your decision based on information from the text, you wanna go ahead and write the evidence straight out of the text that helped you come up with your answer. So you would use the sentence starter that I've given you according to the text, and then you would fill in that blank with the information from the text that supports your answer to number three. Pause the video now to finish responding to this question if necessary. Directions. Answer the following question using specific evidence from the text to support your thinking. Number four. Speaking about Mohawk Chief Joseph Brandt, the text says, the British government gave him a large area of land in what is now Ontario, Canada. Use evidence from the text to make an inference. Why do you think the British gave this loyalist land after the war ended? Okay, just as in question number three, we'll be looking at the section titled, Many Loyalists Flee, and we'll be using this section to help us make an inference about Chief Joseph Brand. We're going to be looking specifically at paragraph one and paragraph three. All right, paragraph one. The Patriots believed the Loyalists were a serious threat to the Revolution. In January 1776, before the Declaration of Independence, the Second Continental Congress resolved that some Loyalists ought to be disarmed and the more dangerous of them kept in safe custody. After independence on July 4, 1776, some states passed laws to control the Loyalists. Their homes and property were taken away. They were beaten, tarred, and feathered, and sometimes killed. This caused thousands of Loyalists to flee. During much of the American Revolution, the British Army occupied New York City. Loyalists fleeing other states gathered there. Okay, paragraph three. Mohawk chief Joseph Brandt was not one of them. He fled to Canada with thousands of Mohawks and other Native Americans. The British government gave him a large area of land in what is now Ontario. Loyalists did not support American independence, but they were an important part of American history. The British called the American Revolution a rebellion. The Patriots called it a war for independence. The Loyalists made the war into a civil war. For your response in number four, I've given you a sentence starter. Remember, you're making an inference about why you think the British government gave the chief a large area of land. You can use evidence from the text. Uh, to support your response. In fact, that's the only way to get a question like this wrong is if you're not supporting your inference with evidence from the text. So start off your response by saying, I can infer the British government gave Chief Joseph Brandt a large area of land because. Again, refer back to the text. You can take a look at the areas that we've underlined together to help you provide evidence for your inference. Pause the video now to finish responding to this question if necessary. Directions. Answer the following question using specific evidence from the text to support your thinking. Number five. This text uses different words to describe the American Revolution. The British called the American Revolution a rebellion. The Patriots called it a war for independence. The Loyalists made the war into a civil war. 
discuss why they might have used different terms to describe the same event. Okay, number five is another question that is asking you to make an inference. You need to discuss or write down why different people use different terms to describe the same thing. Why do you think the British would have called the American Revolution a rebellion? A rebellion, of course, means an act of violence towards the government. That has a very negative connotation or a negative meaning. The Patriots called it a war for independence, which sounds much more positive, okay, which would be a fright, a fight to be free from rule by another government. So we have two different terms that the people are calling this American Revolution, and you need to think about why would different sides call it different things, okay? And then the fact that loyalists were in the mix, they were Americans, but they were siding with the British, they make that into a war, a, a war that's called a civil war, which is a war between citizens of the same country. So you need to think about that, and we're gonna look back at the text. Uh, we are in the same section of the text that we've looked at for the last couple of questions, many loyalists flee. Um, we're gonna look again at paragraph three. Mohawk chief Joseph Brandt was not one of them. He fled to Canada with thousands of Mohawks and other Native Americans. The British government gave him a large area of land in what is now Ontario. Loyalists did not support American independence, but they were an important part of American history. The British called the American Revolution a rebellion. The Patriots called it a war for independence. The Loyalists made the war into a civil war. All right, so now is the time you need to go back and you need to think about what is it that like, why did they use these different terms to describe the same thing? All right, I've given you a sentence starter uh, to begin responding to question number five. Remember, this is an inference, so it's your thoughts. There's no right or wrong answer. The only way to get it wrong is not to provide mm -hmm. evidence from the text. So you're going to start off your sentence by saying, I think people use different terms to describe the revolution because, and then you can go on to describe why the British called it a rebellion, why the Patriots called it a war for independence, and what that meant for each side. Okay, so you're talking about three or four sentences at least to, do, to answer this question correctly and thoroughly. Pause the video now to finish responding to this question if necessary.